Look, look what you had done Playing with my feelings got me thinking you the one I swear you're doing all of this just to have some fun when I saw those rap, I that in Boys and girls, men and women, welcome back to the channel. Hopefully you're taking care of yourself mentally, physically, and spiritually. Because I hate when y'all come on here and you expect to level up when you're not taking care of your mental and your spiritual and your physical, okay? So make sure you're taking care of that. Right now, we are on the way to meet with a gentleman by the name of City. Owns a record label company. Killing the game. Makes millions. But it hasn't always been like that. He moved to LA at 32 years old with only $1,500 to his name. Now he got a multi-million dollar crib and he's helping other artists make millions. So you already know, on Snooze Knows, we're all about providing value. We're all about leveling up. We're all about growing. So we got a special treat for y'all. This is gonna be a good one. Also, just wanna remind everyone, since we're all about leveling up, I have a private community, which a lot of you guys are already in. In this private community, we have like-minded individuals, entrepreneurs, multi-millionaires. We have live calls every week from professionals in real estate. You can learn how to trade stocks like a pro, learn a new business, open a new business. These are actual successful individuals helping you level up where you can ask questions, where you could talk to each other in this community, where we can all grow together. If you are not surrounding yourself with people that are doing better than you, then you are not gonna level up in this life. Click that link in the description below and join today. Nobody's gonna hold your hand and nobody's gonna do it for you. I'm not gonna do it for you. You gotta make the decision. Well, 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 ladies and gentlemen. This is a beautiful crib. Come on in. There he is. Welcome, What's Mikasa up? Sukasa. <laughs> uh, I just pulled a body kit. Forge cop and whips, you ready? Let me fly. What's up, my What's up, G? How you feeling, man? Good, good, good. Good, good I'm to glad see you can make it out, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. It's a beautiful day in LA. Hell yeah. We saw a little sneak peek of the crib, man. That thing looks crazy right now. We see the chain. We see Run It Up Records. Who are you? What's CEO, your name? CEO, Run It Up Records. Okay. My parents named me Stanley Atwater, but the industry calls me City. Short for City Under Siege. Got my chops in Atlanta. I made my M's plus in LA. Mm. So LA is home. You own this record company. 1,000 percent. Okay. And this is what made you millions. Yes. How many millions are we talking? I mean, look, it, it, this, is, this is the deal, right? The good news is around 2012, the music business took a shift into streaming. And the streaming business has been great for entrepreneurs. Yeah. The income is limitless. There's no ceiling on, on in the streaming business. Yeah. Like when it was CDs, we knew how much we were gonna make. It was selling it for $20. You knew how much you were gonna make off of that $20 and it was great. Streaming has, has created a whole nother revenue stream that if you're just a 15 year old kid, you know, sitting in the house and you wanna make a record, you could put it out yourself and make as much money as you wanna make. There's really like no barrier to entry anymore. Gotcha. And you got guys like me that can help that 15 year old kid maximize what he's doing in his bedroom. Gotcha. And help him get it to everybody all across the world. Okay, so you help with that process and, you, and then you, you get a certain percentage from- 1,000 Got gotcha. you, okay, that makes 1, sense. We're gonna dive into a little more because I, I wanna pick your brain how you got started. How much, how much does this house cost? <laughs> this uh, is a business channel, yeah. so we gotta we gotta know. Well, uh, so the value on this house is well over five million. Well over five million. Well, okay. well over five million. Can we check out the whips Ooh, and then do a little crib tour on, and then yeah. pick your brain? <laughs> Ooh. You know what I mean? So we we gonna you know, we just gonna start light. Okay, what we you looking know what at? So we're gonna start light. We just we looking at the we looking at the drop top rolls, you know what I'm saying? We gonna you know it's the it's the it's the it's the dawn. Okay. You what, know what I mean? What so year we is this? Gonna, we gonna, we gonna drop this. So last year they made it. You know what I mean? Um, we gonna drop the top. This right? is 20, 22, 23? 21. 21, okay. Yeah. How much do these go for right now? You know, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna run you a little bit over three. Three? Okay, yeah. 300K. Yeah, Sheesh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? No need. The good thing is you ain't gotta touch the door. You know what oh, I mean? Oh yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's fine. You, know, you ain't gotta touch the door. <laughs> So do people call you City or Sid or? No, they call me City, City. Okay. Yeah, okay. but like if you in Atlanta, they gonna call me City under Sid. Okay. Yeah, you know, that's my Atlanta nickname. So I can call you City? You can call okay. me City, okay. man. Okay. So okay. just like just like that. <laughs> that's look so this is just one of the treats, one of the toys that I got myself for accomplishing Hell a yeah. goal that was really important to me. And uh, yeah, so, you know, Rolls Royce is what we do. Tell me I saw you want. You tell me I saw you need. 
Baby, you know that I'm back. This is one of my favorite parts about the house is the door. Big door, man. Yeah, you know, I just feel like in life, Sheesh. you know what I'm saying? One door closes, another one opens. Uh huh. So the bigger the door, the bigger the opportunity. Mm -hmm. So I had to have this big door. This one opened. This one opened yeah. to a great opportunity for sure. Yeah, you know, so. Uh, oh, this is nice. Yeah. You know my man, Art Atlanta, down in yeah, Miami? Yeah, well, I, I hear about it. Yeah, he did these. For okay, me. yeah. Yeah, these were some of the first paintings that okay. he ever did. And he did it in me and my family. That's fire. And yeah, it was like, literally, um, I've known him since he was, he was in a rap group called Wave Pop. Okay. And, you know, I met him through some mutual music friends and we kind of became really close with each other. And so he was like, man, you got a beautiful family, man. I want to I want, I want, I want to show you what I can do. And literally, he brought these in, man. And I said, I got I, I got the perfect place for them. Yeah, these are fine. And yeah, and it's just yeah. it's just a perfect fit in the house. It's exactly what you want, yeah. you know. Perfect and aesthetic. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like the living room, the family room. The living room, room area right okay. here, you know what I mean? Screen comes down. Sometimes you might want. Oh, for real? So you got. Yeah, a, you might want to. Yes. Oh, now look at this. In there, so sometimes. So you got a TV and a screen. Yeah. So you down? might want to. Might want to watch a movie, right? You watch basketball. Love yeah. basketball. Who's your Who's your team? Come on, I'm from Atlanta, so you know the. Hawks. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ice Trey, <Yeah>. baby. <laughs> you know what I mean? When do you think Ice Trey's gonna make a deep run in the playoffs? Man, you know we got to get some more players. Yeah. That's how, really how that go. It's a team sport. You can't win it by yourself. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. At least you're, you're a, at yeah. least you're an unbiased fan, right? One thousand, <laughs> one one thousand percent. This is my other second favorite okay. part. Ooh. Is you know all the doors open up, yeah. so you know you can really get sexy. Oh what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, well, pocket doors, that. everything. How long mm. you been out here for at this crib? Man, for a while. For a while. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is this is home. This is home. How long you been out in LA for? Ten years. Ten years. Wow. Yeah, I came here with nothing, dog. Oh wow. Came here with fifteen hundred dollars to my name. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Eight hundred square foot apartment, mid Wilshire. That's crazy. And yeah, yeah. Wow. So what I tell people is, use the time wisely because it goes faster than you think. But ten years isn't really a lot of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you put the plan together and you work it the way it's supposed to be worked, you ain't got to worry about you know what the outcome is going to be because you put the plan in motion you yeah. know just you know uh it's one of them things where situations will change things will change sometimes you might have to even run an audible and reroute right but the dreams and the goals got to remain the same. yeah yeah you know what i'm saying you get redirected, yeah. redirected right? yeah you get redirected yeah. but you can't ever can't you, you, you can't get you can't quit you can't get discouraged you got to you gotta stick to the script. How old are you, by the way? Me? Oh, yeah. I'm 42. 42. Okay, yeah. you're young. Yeah, he's, he's, he's still young. Hey, man, but it's been a ride. You <laughs> yeah, know what I'm saying? This is the, yeah, this is the, pool. the pool area. You come yeah, here a lot. Oh, man, what? yeah, man. You know, you gotta, you gotta like, I, I, run, I run in the morning. Okay. I do a couple laps, you know, in the afternoon. Because, you know, you gotta stay, you gotta stay active, man. Yeah, absolutely. Like, you can't, uh, you know, health as well. Yeah. Yeah. 100% because, you know, if you ain't healthy, you know, like, how are you going to be able to live the life that you want? Right? Correct. Like, enjoy it with your family, your friends. Correct. Yeah. And my son had a pool party, so you oh, see okay. the yeah, yeah. see, see the leftovers I over there. Yeah, and got balloons like <laughs> and beach balls flowing over here. So that's what is more for me. It's about progression. I always want to be elevating. Yeah. Hopefully, when we do this again two years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It will be 16,000. Yeah, you know no, yeah, for sure. You know, yeah, like, yeah. That's the goal. You yeah. know what I mean? That's oh, the yeah. goal. Big balcony in the back. That's crazy. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Let's see what's in the freeze. Let's you, see what's in you, the freeze. You eat, you eat at home a lot or? Um, you know, <laughs> it's LA. I have a lot of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. you know how that go, man. Okay. Right now. So right now, this is what I'm digging. It's weird, right? Okay, pickles. I'm on my, I'm on my pickles. I'm, on my, I'm on, on my blueberries. Okay. <laughs> right, matter of fact. Matter of fact, I'm about to get some blueberries yeah, nah. right now. <laughs> so we got to have a team. Oh, what? Yeah, this is that, great, this is that pink grapefruit team. It's good? Y'all ain't, ain't up on this. Okay. Yeah, like I'm going to try that. It, yeah, it's, it's, it's legit. Hold on. Okay. Does I need a bottle over? Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. The ting, huh? This ting. Y'all better cut me a check. What? It's like a sparkling soda or what? Man, this grapefruit joint. Mm. I'm telling y'all, don't play yourself. The, the original team is is good, but this is like a whole nother level of good. You know what I mean? So that's what, what you, I'm on right where now. Where do you buy it from? I get it from the Jamaican spot in LA. Okay. Let's take a drive. 12, 22. 
So. Oh, this is three stories, huh? Three stories. So, right here is uh, a custom atrium Damn. that goes all the way to the top. And you got. That's crazy. A custom light fixture. And if you see through the house, this is the same light fixture. It's a theme. So, you got this one, and you got it in the kitchen. You know what I mean? And then it's in, yeah. it's in all the closets. Damn. Let's go get let's just get this. Oh yeah, no, this get is this right here. This is crazy. So Gee. this is what you come to think. Manifest. All of that. Brainstorm. All of that. Wow. This is dope. How many bedrooms you got in this house? Six bedrooms. Six bedrooms. Six bedrooms, five baths. Seven thousand square feet. Yeah. Crazy. You gotta always be uh making sure that you're ahead of the, the curve. Cause yeah. Business changes, everything changes. Right. You know what I'm saying? What we're doing today is not gonna be what's trending tomorrow. That's true. So as entrepreneurs, we always gotta be, you know, thinking about what what where the where the tide is going. Yeah. Going, yeah. going, going. You always gotta change. keep yeah. evolving and, and adapting, right? One thousand percent. One thousand percent. So this is when I'm when I when I think I gotta evolve and adapt, I come up here and think about what the next move is gonna be. You know what I mean? You, you come here uh, a lot every day, you would say, or yeah, yeah, yeah. I come up here every day. This is like a, this is you know the, the meditation zone right here. I like that. That's so cool. Uh -huh. Oh what? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a shower guy. My got son, you, my you. son's a bath guy. So it's really for him. Okay. But that's dope. This, this watch yourself. This this thing right here. Oh, what the? Yeah, so that comes, you know what I mean? So, see, he can take a bath, I can take a shower, it all works. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? You go high, you go low. What? You know what I mean? And this is all a drain right here, huh? Yeah, and all these yeah. drains. I know I know YouTube is PG. Yeah, So yeah. we won't air dry today. <laughs> but, yeah, and then you just sit here and you air dry and no need for a towel. As you see, I don't have any towels because mm. I don't, you don't need them. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's Because nobody can see you anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? Appreciate the house tour. Appreciate that Man, so thank much. Thank you for coming, bro. No, thank you. Thank you for the hospitality. Now, you're telling us you came into L.A. 32 years old with $1,500 in your pocket. What were you doing before then, before coming to L.A.? Um, I was in Atlanta. So I started out passing out flyers. Like, that's the easiest way to put it. I literally... I had built my name up so big in the city mm -hmm. um, as far as being a, a promotions guy. Okay. Like, I didn't care what it was. A boxing match, uh, a, a, it could have been an alcohol company. So you're anything. promoting a lot of I things. I was promoting okay. a lot of things, okay. but then I started to gravitate more towards music because at that time Atlanta was such a, it had such a thriving music scene. So I kind of built a demand because one day I was out at a club and uh, I saw these kids, or young guys, or whatever they were, and I saw them drop, dump a whole box of flyers in the trash. Yeah. And so I've always been an entrepreneur, and I've always been um, very, very, very serious about entrepreneurship. So I'm always looking for a problem to solve. Yeah. You know, and when I saw that, I'm like, ding! So like when you edit it, like put a light bulb above my head right now. Yeah, yeah. Because that's what happened. Like I remember like it was yesterday. And so I used that moment. So how old were you at this moment, right? At this moment, I'm like 23, 24. 20, okay, okay. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah, I'm a young guy just trying to figure it out. And then I said, if I can be the guy that actually doesn't throw the flowers in the trash, but actually get them to the people, I can create a demand mm -hmm. for, my, for myself. And then I can build a business around that. And uh, that's exactly what I did. Okay. So, so you were promoting just... Yeah, so what ended up happening was I was promoting for clubs. Um, and then a lot of the artists saw how hard I was going for the clubs. And they would come to me and be like, yo, man, I want you to promote my music. Okay. And then it went from me promoting clubs to promoting music for, for artists. And then it went from me understanding, okay, well, I know how to get records played by DJs. Mm hmm I know how to get artists noticed. I know all the club promoters. I might as well, like, you know, start a, a business mm -hmm. behind this. I didn't yeah. know at that time that that business would be me being a, a, a record label owner. Yeah. But I knew, once again, I had a problem that I could solve. Gotcha. And so over time, I met uh, uh, a guy by the name of Jeff Dixon. 
who's Ludacris manager. Okay. You know, he's been Ludacris manager his whole career. And this is at 23? This is like 23, 24. Gotcha, gotcha. And he allowed me to study under him. And uh, I learned a lot of the management side of the business through him. Okay. And then a couple years later, I worked for another guy uh, who had a company called Block Entertainment. This guy by the name of Russell Spencer, uh -huh. uh, Russell Spencer, a.k.a. Block. And he had a record label. Okay. And so now I know the management side from working with Jeff, you know what I'm saying, for those couple years, and now I'm working for a record label. Okay. And those are really the two probably lowest barrier entry points in the music business, management and having a label. Right. So I was blessed to study from two really, really great people who allowed me to just kind of get lost in their in what they were doing yeah. right asked a lot of questions paid attention learned a lot huh didn't yeah. get paid any money wow so i tell everybody out there money is your worst friend when you're trying to learn it gets in the way it, it gets in the way of the hunger it gets in the way of the of the of the zest and the zeal for the job you want to be able to respect the opportunity the opportunity is what gets you to the millions. Mm -hmm. The money is a pacifier. Everybody don't look at me like I'm crazy. Like, what are you talking about? I'm telling you. I've seen it time and time again. Maximize the opportunity. Because when you maximize the opportunity, that's forever. Yeah. What you learn from the opportunity, you can put that and you can take it, any, you can take it all over the world. Yeah, no, that's true. That's a good point. Because a lot of people just want the quick dollar, right? But they don't realize that if they have somebody that's already living the life that they want and they can learn from them for free they don't know how golden that opportunity is one thousand yeah so that's that's and that's, that's what it was right there and it was a golden opportunity so now to learn the management side now to learn the label side um so how, how while you're doing this and you're working for free right you still had to get paid somewhere well yeah so, so what were you doing so to make money? so um the next opportunity with block i made money I was literally making like two thousand dollars a month. Okay. Which you know it wasn't a lot of money, but it was money. But I still had my my core business still, which was the passing out of the flyers. Yeah. And now I've become a club promoter because the club owners are like, well, dang, if he can get dudes to come to my club by passing out flyers, what can he do if I give him the door? Mm -hmm. How many people will he bring? Yeah. And that was a smart move by the club promoter because um, I end up having about four nights at the biggest clubs in the city. One of the biggest nights was uh, 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 Celebrity Mondays okay. at the Blue Flame. Um, this is in, at, in Atlanta. Atlanta. Okay. Yeah, and like if you know anything about Atlanta, Blue Flame is on this road called Bankhead. Um, Bankhead is the most famous road in Atlanta. Um, it's responsible for probably about a billion dollars worth of music. Money. Wow. T.I.'s from there. Yeah. The Dream, the yeah. songwriter who wrote uh, Put a Ring on It, who yeah. wrote, you know, uh, uh, Umbrella for Rihanna. That's All crazy. them, you know, seven time Grammy Award winner is from there. Um, D4L is from there. Shawty Lowe. Uh, Thanks, Shawty Lowe. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah Fable, the franchise boys. Okay. I can go on and on franchise and on and on and on, right? Yeah. So this road is very important. So I decided to get my chops there because what I want everybody to know out there, if you want to be an entrepreneur, the key is you got to know your audience, mm -hmm. right? And I knew early that, that I, I wanted to be in the music business. That was yeah. the plan. And I knew the only way that I could be in the music business was I had to build a brand to where everybody would know cities in the music business. He don't just pass out flyers. He don't just do this, but like, he he actually is a talent finder. He's a guy that is in the music business. So I created this night called Celebrity Mondays. Okay. And it was the first time in the city of Atlanta that rappers were able to perform on a strip club stage. That was like a taboo thing. Like yeah. the strip club stage was for strippers, not for rappers. But because I had leverage and the club owner just wanted me to fill up his club because I was doing it on Monday night. And Monday night, you automatically compete with Magic City Monday, which is probably the biggest Monday night in the world. Mm -hmm. So I purposely picked Monday because 
I knew I had the most leverage to go in and negotiate the best deal with the club on. Yeah. Because he was looking at me crazy. He was like, dude, nobody's going to come here on a Monday. You can't yeah. beat Magic City. I beat Magic City every, every Monday for three wow. straight years. Wow. But what I did differently, and this is always important, is you have to go with the other birds on. Mm-hmm. Right? I didn't do what everybody else was doing. I could have easily made it a typical strip club night. Yeah. I made it about new talent. I made it about the underdog, the little guy. Okay, so it, it wasn't like notable names going No, it was a play on words, gotcha. actually. I called it Celebrity Monday, but what I really was doing was bringing new talent. Gotcha. And I want, and I treated them like a celebrity. Okay. So they would come in, I would give them a section, i give them a bottle, give them 20 chicken wings, um, give them a t-shirt, and then I would print up this mixtape. Yeah. With all the local songs that were popping around Bankhead, and then I would put their song first. That's dope. Yeah. So the important the customer service, you know, um, always remember, good customer service goes a long way. You know what I mean? You don't have to be the best. You don't have to be the biggest. You don't have to be the strongest. But if when if people remember what you do for them, yeah, they don't remember what you you know how much money you give them. They remember though what you do for them, and so. I was doing really, really nice things for the artists. And so first week, maybe 50 people came. Second week, 100 people came. By week five, we were doing three, 400 people. Wow. Every Monday. Yeah. And from there, um, it became a known thing all around the city that if you want to get your record played, if you wanted them chicken wings, gotcha, yeah. if you wanted to be treated like a celebrity, mm-hmm. even though you want a celebrity, was the place you to pulled be up it. on me. Yeah. yeah. And so... That's how I got my chops. Okay. Yeah. So right there, were you were you making some type of money? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was making great money. Yeah. So yeah. How, how, can you give us a yeah? Record? Um, I think every Monday I was bringing in ten, you know, ten ten thousand dollars. Ten like in your pocket. Ten twenty thousand dollars every okay. Monday. Oh wow. Yeah, it was okay. it was it was a big deal. Okay, hell yeah. It was yeah. a big deal. So from that deal. from that point on, what made you want to make the move to LA? You know, like what was the next step? Because you're, you're doing so well in Atlanta, now you're like, okay, I'm going to move to L.A. and I'm, you, you, It's basically starting over again, right? Correct. So, like, what, what was the mindset and what, what was the plan? So, this was the thing, right? And it's important, the uh, um, opportunity. Yeah. Right? So, it was, a, it, at this point, the night had become so big and a lot of new talent would come that a lot of the A&Rs from major record labels would just come to the club and hang out. So I would have like the homies, you know, selling CDs, just working the crowd. And every every night at the end of the night, we were shopping up the money. The homies would come with a different business card, and it'd be like A and R from Warner Brothers, A and R from you know the, the RCA, and all these different labels. Yeah. And so I started to think, I'm like, I got something going here, right? Yeah. yeah. And so one guy kept coming up. Um, shouts out to TA, you know, uh, one of my OG homies. He would come every Monday and like, he's like, you're not a club promoter, dog. You're a record executive. Mm. I'm like, dude, it's $20 to get in, bro. Like, yeah. I'm a club promoter, you know what I'm saying? But every week he would come in there and be like, man, you a record executive. I'm going to take you to meet L.A. Reid. Mm. I'm like, I remember the name. I heard the name. Yeah. But I wasn't putting it all together. So he comes in one night. It's a true story. It's my biggest night of the year. Yeah. It's one of them nights where I make like, Anywhere from fifty to seventy thousand nice. dollars one night. Yeah. Uh, Greg Street would let me do his birthday party. Greg Street's the biggest DJ in Atlanta, and he would let me do his birthday party. Uh, every year we bring out the biggest and the best. I think this year we had Gucci Man, Damn. Uh, uh, Shawty Low, the Shot Boy. They would start Damn, yeah, every year. We start steady, yeah. right? And like it would be a zoo. You couldn't get another soul in there. So Ta comes up on this night, and he's like, "La Reed want to meet you tonight, bro." I'm like, yeah, 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 he can meet me tomorrow. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. I don't think you understand. L.A. Reid want to meet you tonight. Here's your ticket. And the car's waiting outside. We got to go to the airport. Oh, wow. I'm like, dude, it's midnight. I'm not. He's like, nah, it's the last flight. We're going to be straight. Yeah. Because you got to get in the car. He want to meet you. Yeah. And so literally, I'm looking at $70,000. Yeah. And then I'm looking at my future. Damn. $70,000. My future. Right. I get in that car. I never go back to a club again. 
You, do you, you never go back to Atlanta? Never, too. never. No, I, no, I go back to Atlanta, <laughs> okay. but I never go back to throwing parties or, wow. or a club. Yeah. I go back and I'm fully committed to being a record executive. Wow. After I met L.A. Reid and I went and I, you know, I went to Worldwide Plaza in New right. York and I saw this black man with this 5,000 square foot office, all white, you know, just like living life. I'm like, this is what I want. Yeah. I want I wanna I want this. What did he say to you when you when you met him? And so here's the funny thing. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> so I walk in the office and he's like, yo, word on the street, man, you know, you you got all the hits. Like you know the rec you know where all the records at. Like, you know where all the talent is. I got two C D players over there in the corner. Right? The first one broke. So if it's some bullshit, put it in the first one. That's what he said to really? me. So wow. talk about the pressure yeah, being yeah, on. Yeah, 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 this is like sure. one of the greatest wow. record executives of all I time. Know. And this is how he's talking to me. Yeah. So I really kind of like had to come with it. Yeah. And I, I, I was, and this is the key to being prepared. So remember them CDs I told you I was mm. printing up? Yeah, yeah. I pulled the CD out of my bag. That's all I had, right? And so I had two records at the time that I was like working. One was... Uh, J Money, first name, last name. It's done by both. Both were done by the same producer, K.E. on the track. Okay. And uh, the other one was Swag Surf. The CD skipped to Swag Surf. And at this on this day, you got yeah. it. was like one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. L.A. Reid had just hired this this guy who now he runs a huge record company. He had just hired David Massey from oh. London, and so he's in the office. Yeah. And um, um. The, re the record comes on and you know you can cue the record now and the way the record starts the first five seconds is number horns yeah so all you hear is these horns dun, dun. so they're like, like he looking <laughs> and david looking yeah. and then that 808 drop dude they both get up david stands on top of his chair then you know what i'm saying i'm doing the dance i'm swaying yeah. back and forth and like the song goes off and LA's like, what was that? Yeah. And I'm like, that's the hottest team record in Atlanta right wow. now. Wow. Yeah. And so he said, what am I supposed to do with that? I said, we're going to put it out and sell a million copies and make a million dollars. And that's exactly what we did. Wow. And so that was the first record I ever put out. Yeah. And it's crazy that you said it, it coincidentally, but it's not coincidence that it skipped to that. Because nah. it wasn't the first song. It wasn't yeah, the yeah. first and song. It, wow, it was yeah. Song. Like it, it, was, it, was like, it was like the universe and God, yeah. like, hey, this is it. Yeah, it was the wow. universe and God. And at that time, I was That's actually crazy. closer to the first artist. Yeah. Like, we were, like, kicking it way hard. And so I think God knew that I needed to be put in a more challenging situation yeah. to where I, like, had to use everything that I had learned. Because you got to understand, I, I was managing the group. I was promoting the record. Like, I did every job because I didn't know what else to do. I'm like, this is my shot. Yeah. Like, I'm not about to lead this in nobody else's hands. So, you know, I worked the record. I, 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 I called every DJ across the, the country. Yeah. We got in the van and rolled from Maine to Spain. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. From Atlanta to Dallas and Dallas to, 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 to Memphis. And we literally beat that record up for 14 months before it hit the chart. Yeah, because luck, luck, it's not, it's, there's no such thing as luck, it's luck is created by process, right? So that, all of that is the process of you creating that, wow. Now I'm around 27. Okay, so 27. I'm 27. Okay, so what happens between 27 and 32 when you're like... 27 to 30, what happens is I go broke. What happens? I lose everything. How? Because I didn't understand the business. Wow. I didn't understand that. So you were, so you were still in Atlanta? Yeah, I'm in Atlanta. Okay. I got a hit record. Okay. Swag Servant's a massive record at that time. Mm -hmm. We made plenty of money. We were on the road for a year and a half. It was great, right? Um, I bought my first house, dope crib, on the lake, you know, all the things, right? Buying a couple cars, I'm feeling great. But what I didn't understand was the how business works is you're only as good as your last hit. Yeah. Right? Right. So I'm riding the wave literally and figuratively of Slag serving it is one hit, not thinking about the future. Yeah. So Damn. I did the two things I did really well was um, I never wanted to be boxed in. 
So when Swag Serving was popularized, I did a lot of traveling. I made a lot of great connections in other markets. Yeah. So I was able to sign another record. It wasn't as big as Swag Surfing, but that sustained me. But I still didn't quite understand the business. So at 30, I literally go broke. House forecloses. Wow. They come take all the cars out of my out of my driveway. I don't have a car. I don't have nothing. Like, lose everything. Damn. Um, How do you feel during that time, though? Man, it was bad. It was honestly, it was bad. Did you, did um, you get like a depression or were you no, like, oh, you know what? Like, did you accept it? And, and did you know you were going to get out of it? Well, the one thing about when you're an entrepreneur, you always know you're going to get out of it. Yeah. Like that part, you ain't, you know, like I knew I was going to get out of it. Um, I just didn't know if I would get that another opportunity at being a record executive. Yeah. Because what we all have to realize is opportunities are few and far between. Don't let nobody lie to you. Like opportunities are few and far between so when you get one you got to swing for the fence like you can't play with it you can't pussyfoot around that's true when you when you when you get your shot you got to swing and so that's what i learned in that in that moment yeah. is that when swag seven was popping and then when i went and found that other record i should have had 20 of them yeah i should have been like yeah, you know what I'm like saying? Yeah, yeah, I should have been like Sammy Sosa, just like every time my pitch came. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, but I was yeah. getting so much money, and I was young, I didn't really understand. You're blinded by that, yeah, that the was moment, the versus, temporary yeah, yeah. trappings, yeah. right? Yeah. So that was the biggest lesson from that is maximize the opportunity. Yeah. Like enjoy the moment, right? But maximize the opportunity. Yeah. So what I told so what I end up doing, I end up going back, throwing parties again. Okay. Get my get my feet back wet. So before you continue, I'm assuming mm-hmm. that you weren't you, you weren't managing your money well in that in those times because you thought it was gonna last forever. So you're you're splurging, huh? Yeah, splurging. Yeah, okay. Taking care of the homies. Gotcha. Okay. You know, just young and dumb. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Young young and dumb. But more was going out than what was coming in. Gotcha. Yeah. That was the real issue. Yeah. And the thing about when it's happening like that, you don't know until it's gone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? By the yeah. time you start, tr- but it goes back to what we talked about earlier. You also can't take the approach of where you're thinking cutting back. You just got to figure out a way to get more cash flow. Facts. You can't. Fi- you can't go out and eat at this restaurant, and I gotta. You know, I can't buy these um, off whites today. Yeah. I can't do this. No, you got to figure out how to bring in more revenue. Yeah. And that was the moral of the story. So, okay. Um, make a long story short. Yeah. I end up going back to what I knew, just to kind of get back on my feet, answering right. your question. Okay. So I get back to throwing parties. The music business shifts. It goes from CDs to streaming. I said, okay, this is my opportunity. This is my second chance at romance, because I'm great at math. I'm a hustler, and I already know what I did wrong the first time. I'm going to get it right the second time. So when streaming came, I knew that the whole music business was going to shift. And I knew that if I could be on the forefront, solve a problem, a streaming, my income would be unlimited. You know what I mean? Like, I get get have what I want to have. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You know, talent means nothing without hard work. I just had to work hard at learning the business of streaming. Mm-hmm. And um, that's what I did. It took me about three, t- t- about three years. Three years to Ooh. to really learn it and understand it. So when you talk about streaming, you're talking about like the main hitters like Spotify, Apple Music, iTunes, iTunes, okay, Deezer, Pandora. Deezer, okay. How did you learn it? And, and um, like, what did you learn to to get to that level of like, okay, I can I can run this? Um, what I learned was what the internet does. This does. Yeah is it helps us reach people fast. True. And so I knew that streaming would allow me to touch more people, you know, in a much more efficient way. You know what I mean? Like what what it would take 14 months to spread a record, now I could probably do it in four weeks. Yeah. So I focused on finding talent and finding things that I knew would resonate within a niche or a market that I can move very, 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 very efficiently and very, very quickly. Got you. Okay. So 
when you turned 32, you moved to LA, and was it during, was, those, was it those three years that you were learning streaming, or were you learning before you moved to LA? I knew that it was happening in yeah. Atlanta. Okay. But the reason why I moved from Atlanta is because nobody in Atlanta understood that it was happening. Yeah. So I had to get out of that environment gotcha. and get into a whole fresh environment. Now let me tell you how God works. I did not know when I moved to LA that I would be putting myself right in the epicenter of streaming. Mm. I just knew that I had to get out of my environment. Gotcha. Because it was an environment of people still doing things the old way. And that's okay. Yeah. I just I just knew though. I knew that Streaming was going to be the future and the only way that I would be able to do it in peace Is I had to get out of that environment where everybody was still trying to do it the old way gotcha, right? Okay, and by moving to LA what I what I didn't know is just funny and I guess it was my meditation and my prayer and the universe aligning me right almost like that CD skipping to the second song Yeah, yeah. was like I said, I lived, I'm, the first people I met when I moved to LA was Jake, Logan Paul, uh, and a whole bunch of influencers. And that's all they were doing was stream. Yeah. That's it. I taught them the entertainment business, they taught me the streaming business. Mm. And 2014, my second year in LA, um, I, 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 I had a record. And this record, um, gets Kylie Jenner, it's like 15, 16 at the time. Mm -hmm. She puts the record on her Snapchat. It goes viral on, yeah. on, on Vine, right? And no, no, it was a musically, what was it? No, Vine. Yeah, Vine, Vine. Vine. yeah, yeah. And um, telling my age, but yeah, Vine, it goes viral on Vine. And then I was already connected with all the influencers. So when it got popping with her, I got it to everybody else, Jake, Logan Paul, I'm like, hey man, y'all do something funny to this video. So half a million units, you know, which, that's a couple million dollars in yeah. a month. Wow. And that was it. Yeah. I didn't look back. Yeah, that's crazy. I moved from the 800 square foot apartment to Beverly Hills, got a condo, and I just kept rent, rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah. Rinse, wash, repeat. Yeah. And then I found a kid a year later by the name of Trinidad Cardona. Uh huh put out a record called Jennifer. It goes gold in like three months independently. Wow. You know what I mean? That record generates a couple million dollars. Sheesh. Then we put out a second single on him named De Niro. That record generates a couple million dollars. Then we just, now we roll. Yeah, wow. <laughs> yeah, so when, when a record generates a couple million, what's your, what's your cut from that? What's your percentage? It, 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 it like a range. Well, it depends. Um, Cause I know the artist gets, right? Like. It, yeah. Well, so the good, so if you own if you own a record company like me, mm -hmm. you know it's no different than if you're a real estate agent or if you you know gotcha. if you're a stockbroker, okay. you know you get the, the the brokerage gets the line share of the cut, and then the uh, the uh, the brokers get a percentage of that. Yeah, but you you're know? you're like you're like the brokers I'm the broker. and the yeah. and the real estate yeah. agent, so All you right. get more of a percentage. One thousand. Okay. Is yeah. it like uh, is it like forty to fifty or is it? Around. Well, shouts out to Master P, right? Master P did something, you know, many, many years ago where he, you know, he cut a deal and cash money, you know, shouts out to them to, to them guys too, where, you know, they were getting 80 20s. 80 20s. Yeah. So they're so, getting 80 in the hey, yeah. Wow. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, like, those are, you know, those are really strong deals. Well, actually, the way they were doing it was they were the record company and they were getting 80% and they were in partnership with someone yeah. and giving them 20%. Yeah. And so, um, at the end of the day, uh, I personally only do partnership deals. Okay. I don't do those kind of deals. Like, I do 50-50 deals with everything. Got you, got you. But yeah. the, the thing, the, the benefit of going through you is the promotional. One thousand And the exposure. Yes. And it's like, it's more beneficial to, to do that than just to do it yourself and get barely any streams. One thousand yeah. percent. Okay. So that, that kind of going a little back. The first big payout you you had was you said a couple mil for that well, first month. The first big payout I ever had was uh, uh, half a million dollars in a month. Half a mil. Whew. In a month. Yeah. 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 What's your best year? Best year? I wrote down on a sheet of paper when I moved to LA that I wanted to make ten million dollars. Mm -hmm. That was the goal. You made over that. Yeah, yeah. That was the goal. Okay. Oh yeah. So that was what I wrote down. That's why I tell people sometimes we aim too low. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? So we got to, you know, like, because we never really get what we aim for. That's right? true. Yeah. So you want to shoot high. Like, you have to dream big. Because now, I wish I wrote down a billion dollars on that paper. Yeah. Uh, you can still, you uh, yeah, can, nah, still going I'm, up. Yeah, yeah, I'm still going up. But I'm just saying that that the, the, the power of broke yeah. is a real thing. Yeah. When you broke, your mind and your hunger is at a different level. Yeah. It just is. Like, when you start getting money and, you know what I mean, and, you know, bills are paid and everybody around you kind of straight and you kind of see what's going on and, you know, Rolls Royce ornaments popping out of your hood. Yeah. You know, you kind of start to understand, like, okay, let me let me be smart, right? Let me yeah. let me protect. Let me, you have to go into that mode. That's true. But when you in dream building mode, that's when you dream big. That's when you get outlandish. Like to the point, people should be laughing at your dreams. Yeah. It's hard to get people to laugh at your dreams now because you dream, you live in the dream. Yeah, yeah. That's you get true. what I'm saying? So yeah. everybody looking at you like, yeah, I bet you want a billion dollars. Yeah. You probably already got it. But when you, when your ribs is touching, you know what I mean, and, 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 and you you on you on foot, you know where I'm from, they call it foot patrol. Yeah. You ain't even got no car. That's when you got to think outlandish. Got you, yeah. No, you know what I mean? True. That ain't the time to think conservative. That ain't the time to be, you know, um, that ain't the time to be meek and mild. That's the time to, I'm about to get up out of this. Yeah. I'm about to dig up out of this hole. So I want a private plane. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to generate $100 million on my first, like you got to, you know what I mean? And that's just something that, that I now know because one of my mentors broke it down for me like this. He was living in San Diego at the time and he had me drive down there. And he looked at me and he said, what's going on with your business, man? It was like right when I started running up. Yeah. First year was brutal. You know what I mean? We didn't make no money. It was just kind of like trying to still figure it out. You know? Um, Might have made like fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 like yeah. my first year in business, yeah. right? So I'm still trying to figure it out. Ain't no money in L.A. Yeah. So my mentor kind of saw I was going through it. So he asked me a question. He said, who's your competition? He said, who's, who's the number one record label? you know, in the in the country right now. I said, yeah. at that time, it's cash money. Mm -hmm. I said, cash money records. He was like, okay, what makes them number one? I said, they got Nicki Minaj, they got Wayne, they got Drake. He was like, all right. He was like, well, how much you think they made last year? I was like, he probably made $100 million last year, maybe $150 million. He said, so you telling me you're a Nicki Minaj, a Lil Wayne, and a Drake. Those are three artists. And remember, at this time, Drake wasn't Drake. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Technically, you two artists away from making 150 million dollars. He said, "Man, get your butt in that car and drive back to LA." Yeah. He said, "You tripping?" And that's when like my mindset changed because I'm like, sometimes it's like we were talking about on the roof. Sometimes we think that the mountain that we gotta climb is so high yeah. that we'll never get there. Like you, you, you know, it's, it's you get you, overwhelmed. You yeah. get overwhelmed, right? You start to think like, man, I'm. Man, I can't. Ain't no way in the world I'm about to climb that palm tree. That's too high. Yeah. But I done seen, it's a dude that I pay every month to come and climb that palm yeah. tree and trim it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I'm looking at it like, ain't no way I'm going to climb that palm yeah. tree. But I pay somebody top dollar to climb that palm tree. Mm -hmm. So, we, what really ends up happening is we let the minutia and we let all the noise block us True. from whatever we got to do to climb that mountain. Maybe you need some new mountain boots. Maybe you need a bigger pick. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But somebody's climb is, is, I don't know how many people climb Mount Everest now. I don't know if it's up to five or it's up to 10, but Mount Everest has been climbed multiple times now. Yeah. So that means it can be done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, That's a good point. So, so, so once he cut out all the noise, it was much easier for me now to go back with a focus. Yeah. And that's what I did. Yeah. And literally the next year, we did six figures in business. Nice. You found some talent. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just I just stopped I stopped looking at how big the mountain was. Mm -hmm. And just you take know? it step by step, brick by brick. One thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. Okay. One thousand percent. Okay. So how big is your team right now? Right now I got like a seven man crew. Seven man crew. Okay. Because yeah. everything's all online and yeah. digital anyway. Yeah. Okay. And if you really look at like really huge companies, startups, and how they started. Like, Mark Zuckerberg started Facebook with three of his yeah, college like dorm people. buddies. Yeah. When it comes to finding talent, right, you have an A&R specialist, or you, um, do you ever go find it yourself, or do people contact you, and like, hey, like, help me, like, how, how does that work? 
<laughs> that's my specialty. Yeah. That's what I love most about the business is the the talent finding okay. part. Like um, most of my ninety nine point nine percent of my biggest records um, have either come either I found them or they come referral based. Mm. That's why it's important to keep your relationships going. Yeah. Like I, I built so many great relationships and the DJs. More importantly, shouts out to DJs. I love anybody. There's, I don't care if you DJing in front of ten people in a club or a thousand people in an arena. I love you because DJs have been so good to me. You know, um, through this journey, you know they brought me some of the best talent. Yeah. You know, and um, I must admit, a, a lot of a lot of what I found has been referral based. And that goes back to that good customer service. Yeah. Because I've done right by a lot of people. Marketing is seven touches. It's going to take seven times for somebody to remember you anyway. So if I didn't see it seven times, it's not for me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I feel that. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I, yeah. need to, I need to feel it. I need to know it's real. You know what I mean? I need, I, I need to discover it. Yeah. No, I feel that. So now let's just talk about the business side of things. Okay. So you have an artist that you, you like, you like their style, you like their music. What do you do next? Like you, you find ways to promote his music or her music and how, how do you go about that? So I find the artist, first thing I do is I'll fly the artist out. Okay. You know, and I sit with them because I like to inspect what I expect, you know? I like that. I don't want to get into business with somebody that's thinking that that tree's green and I think you know what I'm saying? It's Brian. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, we got to be on the same page. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, um, that's the first thing I like to do, is I like to um, vet what I'm getting myself into. Then I like to actually do some big dream building. I, like, I want to know what your goals are. I want to know what you want to get out of this, right? Because I know what I want to get out of this. Yeah. So I want to know what you want to get out of this. And then the third thing is, um, I want to know what your work ethic is. Because the music part is easy for me. Yeah. You know so what I mean? I've been doing it in. long enough. I, I, I know, like, I'm okay with an artist not necessarily coming to me with a hit record. Because I believe if you got a work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, talent means nothing without hard work. If you got, if, if you talented, but you're not willing to put in the work, the only thing I know for sure is that you're never going to get a hit record. Mm -hmm. That's what I know. But if you're willing to put in the work, right, and you're talented, yeah. I can guarantee you're gonna get a hit record. Yeah, and it's more sustainable, right? Yeah. Okay. It's no different than if you go to the gym every day, you're gonna get some muscles. 100%. It might take 18 months for that one peck to show up. Yeah, yeah. But it's gonna show <laughs> it's up. It's gonna happen, yeah. It's Stay just... in the gym for 18 months. Yeah. Once I find the talent, right, now we go get the hit. Okay. Um, that's, that's the fun part, is figuring out what sound can I create with this person that is going to build him a fan base and his fan base is going to authentically love him and then in return love the record. You know, yeah. we got the hit, we got the visual, we got the work ethic, we got the talent. Mm -hmm. and now now it's time to get paid. Yeah. When you, when you talk about getting paid, is it, is it just through the streaming services? The goal for me is to find artists that want to work hard and build a brand so they can go and take all the marketing and promotion dollars that I'm spending at radio, TikTok, yeah. videos, right? And go out and use that as a platform to go out and create ancillary income for themselves. True, yeah. Like that's the way the music business has always been set up. Mm -hmm. And that's how you maximize it, right? Yeah. Because like I tell people, Drake just got his masters a year ago. But Drake's done probably a hundred million in merch and touring every year for the last ten years. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Because the reality of it is, is his brand that he's created through his vehicle of music makes him a king's ransom. Yeah. So the key is maximize the opportunity and make sure you're the most valuable person in the room. Mm-hmm. That's good. My oh, man, thank you so much. Where can people find you? Instagram? Instagram, uh, City Under Siege. Okay. 
uh, C I T I U N D E R S I E G E. Uh, I before E, boys okay. and girls. Yeah. Um, we'll put the link in the description yeah. as well. Yeah. Run it up. Uh, R I U Records on IG, and then uh, www.runitup.com. And uh, we got plenty of records out there for y'all to stream. Um, right now, we're excited about uh, the No Love She Mix okay. um, by Trina. And we're excited about Famous Uno, who's uh, out of California. He's got a record called Ooh, that's going crazy. Don't forget MDG Jagger. That's, that's actually one of my favorite records. You get in the car right now. That's probably what you're going to hear. You tell me I'm someone you want. You tell me I'm something you need. Baby, you know that I'm bad for you, yeah Why you gotta be so naive? If I treat you like one I don't want Then you know I'm just so hard to please 